Hi folks, this is a predictions video for the Leave Insert Ordinary Paper 1 for 2025. What comes up every year? I'm going to go through these things. I'm going to give an overview of topics which have come up in the last four years in exam papers. I'm going to give a list of recurring topics to focus your revision on. Then I'm going to provide links and QR codes all with the 2024 exam paper. So we're looking at where those topics came up in the 2024 paper. Here's a list of the topics. The first one is complex numbers, big topic, and I've narrowed it down a little bit to conjugate, modulus, and rationalizing the denominator. I think those three things are the most important things there to know. The minus b formula, part of algebra. Differentiation then, another really big topic on paper one. You really can't go into the exam without a good grasp of differentiation. Number four is solving equations, and number five is trapezoidal rule. They're smaller little topics that seem to come up a lot. Number six is filling in a table from a function and drawing a graph. That always comes up in the longer questions, in questions seven, eight, nine, or ten. And sequences, so t of n and s of n are two formulae in your log tables, so just knowing what they are, what they're about, and how to sub into them. It will get you some marks. And then the last one is income tax. Then the first topic that I'm going to look at fully then is complex numbers. I've put down conjugate modulus and rationalizing the denominator here. If you look at it, this spreadsheet, this is a basic overview of all of the topics that come up every year. So in question one in 2024, finding a percentage depreciation and then representing as a percentage VAT rep reverse percentages. It's just a vague kind of summary of what comes up in each question that I've put in here. Question two then you'll see is the complex numbers question. And complex numbers is a definite question. Um, I'm fairly sure it has to be a definite question in every, it's always gonna be in question two or question three, possibly question one of uh, the paper. You'll see actually there in 2022, it came up in question one. But 2024, it was question two. 2023, it was question two. And if we go back then and look at 2021 as well, it was uh, question two as well. Generally question two then. What we're looking for in here then is modulus and conjugates. So you'll see there it came up in, both of those came up and rationalizing the denominator came up as well. And then 23, you see conjugate there in part A. Um, modulus came up as well. Then in 2022, conjugate again. Um, don't see the other ones there actually. But they may have come up in some shape or form. And then modulus and conjugate again there and rationalizing the denominator in 2021. So they're pretty much coming up every year. There's not that much that can be asked in complex numbers. That's why I always try and target it for marks. This question then was the question from last year. This was the 2024 question. Uh, part A is putting, is identifying points on the Argon diagram. I don't have that included in with the rest of them there, um, plotting on argon diagram but that's generally easy it's the first it's a very first bit of complex numbers here you had to they gave you where they were on the graph and you had to say what they were so z1 there is 4 plus 3i uh, z2 is 0 plus 2i and z3 is minus 2 minus 1i and that's all for the first bit of it and then the second bit of it it has the two lines down the side there of z2 and that always means modulus. You have to know that going into the exam, the symbols. And conjugate is when you have the little line above. There is a QR code there as well if you want to click into that and look at the full video solution of it. And it goes into it in a bit more detail. The next part of the question was rationalizing the denominator. And uh, that's where we're taking the conjugate of the bottom. The bottom there is 1 plus 2i. So we multiply by 1 minus 2i, 1 minus 2i, and we just multiply out, and that's really all. It was a good few marks, I think, going for that. And the last part here was slightly different. It's identifying the conjugate on the map, or sorry, not on the map, on the Argon diagram. 
it asks us for the conjugate of w w is there it's one plus two i and we can therefore obviously see that the um, conjugate of it would be one minus two i therefore it has to be c and you just had to take a box there for c and give it a reason that was 30 marks then that was the full complex numbers question for last year and just to emphasize again it's those three things i'd really be focusing on conjugate modulus and rationalizing the denominator and then plotting on the argon diagram as well i suppose and just have a general flick through the papers then each year they always ask something else in the question as well and they might mix up these together and make them a bit more awkward but generally that's all that can come up in complex numbers so that's a really important topic Uh, the next one is minus b formula. This came up late enough in the paper last year, as far as I remember. Uh, no, it came up in part b there in question 3 last year. Then uh, it actually came up twice actually. Yeah, you see there at the end of question 9 as well in the longer questions you had to use minus b formula for a part as well. I'll show you both of those questions in a second. Question 6 there, uh, part C, came up in 2023. Then in part F in question 7 in 2022 I see it came up. And in 2021, it came up in part 4C. That's minus B formula. And we need to be able to identify when to use it. So when it, where it comes up in an exam, this is basic enough question. It gives us a quadratic there because we have an X squared term, we have an X term, and we have just a number, an equals zero. Therefore, uh, we have to use minus B formula. We can't just move the X's to one side, the numbers to the other, because we can't combine the X squared and the X give your answer to two decimal places is generally a sign as well to use this therefore uh, form is in the log table and it's just subbing in it's identifying what a b and c are uh, this was the other place it came up this was the what i was meant what i was saying there just came up at the end as a part in one of the questions in section b and again similar enough thing a is one because there's not in front of the x squared b is minus 100 and C is 2,400, even though they're really big numbers here, we do it the same way, you're just putting them into the calculator, let the calculator do the work. The next one is simultaneous equations non-linear. I'd say this is one of the hardest things that's on the whole course, or one of the things students find hard, really hard when they do it first. Maybe it's because you do it at the start of fifth year, and your skills with algebra haven't really been built up yet. But even just being able to start this it's always going to be worth a lot of marks i think this question was worth 15 marks just this part this is part c and even if you're able to get the first bit of it or maybe even get down to, to where you're, you're solving the x even with a, a mistake or two in it you'll probably get more than half the marks therefore it's it's worth practicing it and just uh being able to start the question at least interestingly they actually gave you a hint last year it's the first time i've ever seen this on exam papers definitely even cert it says use 2x plus y is equal to 5 to write y in terms of x that's what we do first and that's what i've done here i've brought the 2x over to the other side and it becomes a minus 2x y is minus 2x plus 5 and then we put the minus 2x plus 5 in instead of the y in the other equation and then we multiply out from there and we end up having to do the minus b formula and then we get two answers for x and you sub both of them back in and get two answers for y it's a long process but again a lot of marks going for it uh, so question three in 2024 now it actually came up in 2023 in paper two. It came up as the point of intersection of a line and a circle. 
So though it did come up now, it's under a different the name of a different topic. It's within the circle question on paper two, but it's exactly the same process that you use. So it, it did technically come up in twenty twenty three, but on paper two. Um. Then. Uh, Twenty twenty two simultaneous equations came up. That was the linear one. You do them slightly differently. It's not exactly the same thing. Or you could do them in a similar way if that's the way you've been taught. In twenty twenty one, that it came up as part B of question four. That was twenty twenty one. A very popular question. Now this one is linear equations. This is solving a linear equation. Notice you don't have any x squareds in here. When you don't have that, you can just move all of the x to one side, all of the numbers to the other. That's how you know the difference between when to use the minus b formula and when to do this. Here we have to multiply the four into the brackets. We get eight x minus 20, and the minus one is still there. We bring it down, we bring everything else down. Then we bring the x's to one side, we bring the 3x over to the left hand side, we bring the minus 20 and the minus 1 over to the right hand side. And then we end up getting 5x is equal to 28 and x is equal to 28 over 5. The last step there will always be to divide when we have 5x is equal to 28. x is being times by 5 so we bring across the 5 and divide it. That's linear equations. Uh, solving a linear equation was question 4 in 2024. It was question 3a in 2023. And then it was question 2a in 2022. And again, it was part a there of question 4 in 2021. Therefore, uh, it comes up every year. It's a very important part of maths anyway, being able to solve, being able to move things across equal signs. You'll see it come up in other parts of almost nearly every topic and uh, in stuff in paper too as well. Right, differentiation then. Um, I'm going to go through different places that it came up on the paper. This was one part, it was, they just gave us the function p of t and they ask us for p dash t and that little dash in there is your clue to know that you differentiate. And we're just multiplying the power by the number in front and then dropping down the power by one and that's all we do. And then the second part of this question, it's not differentiation technically, it's substituting in, but it's fairly clear what we do. So uh, I've included it, we're just putting a two in instead of the t when we've already differentiated in the first part. This was max and min. You should know when it mentions local, well, when it mentions max or min in questions, we're generally going to be differentiating, let that be equal to zero, and then solve for x. And that's always what we do. And to get the, the full point, we're going to, we found out what x is here, x is two. We're just subbing that two back into the original function then into the 5x squared minus 20x plus 20, sorry, plus 2, and we get minus 18 as our answer. So 2 minus 18 is our minimum point there. And that's all we do is differentiation, a big part, max or min, we know that we differentiate and let it be equal to 0. I think there was 20 marks then going for that question. And if we look down through this then, Uh, differentiating a function is in there, question 7. Differentiating then a local minimum. That was that question. It's in question 5 there. Yeah, 
in question six there in 2023 then you'll see it's finding max and min again similar enough we're differentiating and differentiating a function there and there's a bit more to do with functions in question four that's all 2023 uh, 2022 and the last question question 10 there differentiating a function uh, differentiating a function again find an equation of a tangent there in question 4 of that year Then turning point, the same thing really as max or min uh, in 2021. That was question five in 2021. And it'll always come up in this other, in section B as well. Uh, That's it for differentiation. Um, differ be able to differentiate a function, be able to find max and min, and be able to find that equation of a tangent as well. It's where you have to do a bit extra again um, after you just differentiate, but they all start with the same thing. And it's easy enough to see where it comes up. It'll always be when a function is given. And look out for f dash x or something dash something in that form, or look out for dy dx or d something d something as well. Uh, just get used to the symbols that's that's used for it. All right, this is the trapezoidal rule. It might not come up as often, or it'll only always come up maybe in one little bit of the paper. But again, it's just filling into a formula. The formula is in the log tables. That's what it is in red in there. And uh, it's fairly straightforward. They'll always give us a little table like that as well. And it'll generally mention trapezoidal rule in the question. So I think it's worth uh, doing a bit of revision for because It'll be easy enough marks to pick up. I'll just check where it's come up before. Uh, in part B there last year in 2024. Then in question eight in 2023, it can often come up in part section B it fits nicely in there when there's a shape. Maybe you have to do other things with the shape and then you have to use trapezoidal rule to find the area of it. And then 2022 and 2021, I don't see it there. It might have come up. I just might not have it down. But uh, again, a small enough little topic to come up and always going to be worth a few marks to you. The, this is filling in a table. This generally always comes up in section B. It's when they give us a function like this, P of T is equal to, and then they give us that, and then we just have to put in each value. So we're just putting in a zero instead of T everywhere, and put it into the calculator, you get 20, and then put in a one. They've done the two for you, and then you put in three, and you put in five as well. They've already done the four for you. And when you've that done, then you'd plot zero, 20, zero, 20, that point there on the graph 121 is this point on the graph and so on it's easy enough marks generally just practice it and make sure that you get them if it comes up there was question seven last year um, so being into equation there in question seven the year before uh, yeah, that was actually question nine really as well. Filling in a table from a function and sketching the graph, sketching the table on a graph. Then in 2022, it was question seven again, the start of it, question part A. And in 2021, It 
it's part D and part E there. So towards the end of that question, which was a bit unusual, in it was question 8 in 2021. Right, this is sequences. The first part here was nice enough. It's that Ellie takes up running. In the first week, she runs six kilometers, and then each week she runs 1.5 kilometers more than that. So we have to add on 1.5 each time here and just fill that into a table. That's a nice enough little question. And the second part is find the distance she would run in week 100. And this, what I've done here is I've used the formula t of n is equal to a plus n minus 1d, and we can just put everything in. a is always the first term, d is always the difference between the terms, which is 1.5 in this case, a is 6, and then you're putting in 100 instead of n, and then that gives you the answer. What you could do here is you could keep going with adding on 1.5 each time until you get to the 100 term, so the 7 term you can see would be... 15 because you're adding on 1.5 again and then it'll be 16.5 would be the seventh one and you could keep going on like that with using your calculator to help you until you get to one to the 100 one term but you might run out of time in an exam it, it'll take a few minutes to do that and you don't really want to make a mistake either because you don't really have workings then to show if you do but using that formula will always come up at some stage and you can use it there here then s of n came up and again that's a formula it's in the log tables and you just have to put them in the a is still going to be the first term in the sequence and d is still going to be the diff uh, the difference between each term and we just have to put it in there and, and multiply out the, what's uh, outside the bracket and then we end up getting 3 or over 4 n squared plus 24 21 over 4 n now you mightn't have got that far, but as long as you get down through most of it, you've got nearly all the marks. And it's just being able to know where the formula is in the log tables and being able to sub into it. That was for the same value sequences uh, we did for the last part. That was question 8 last year and then sequences came up a little bit in question 9 the year before then in question 6 comes up in 2022 so I use an end term that's just the t of n bit and again in uh, question 6 there in 2021 and it might come up in other parts of questions as well there that I haven't written down and it can always come up in section A and in section B All right, that's sequences. The last thing then is just income tax. And I've just put in income tax. I haven't mentioned any other financial maths. Financial maths is always on paper one as well. So finding a percentage of something will always get us some marks in there and being able to represent it as a percentage. So look out for percentages and just be able to, like what I said, find a percentage of something and represent something as a percentage. And that'll get us through a lot of marks. That's most of this question, really. It's income tax. And we just have to know what tax credit means as well. And if you look back through the papers, then... Like, percentages comes up there a good bit in question one last year. And it came up in section B. Then that question I've just shown you there was in section B. Uh, currency exchange comes up there in question 9 as well um, yeah all of question 10 was financial maths uh, percentages again there in question 9 the year before and tax was all of question 10 the year before as well so question 10 the last two years have been a lot of tax and using percentages 
Uh, question eight, they're finding a percentage in 2022. Uh, percentage of an amount and then tax again there in the last question. And in 2021, uh, yeah, question one. So it can always come up in two parts in section A and section B as well. And generally, it's, if you do business studies particularly, you'll, you'll, you're get, you're going to get some marks. You're, going to, you're probably going to like this topic. Uh, working out percentages, all of tax there again. That question, question seven there in 2021. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention it much in this video, but again, financial maths is a big enough topic in paper one. But these those are the topics. I'll just go back to them again. Those are the topics I'd be looking at first in order to try and pass this paper. So try and get a good grasp of those and then try to branch out a little bit, look at the rest of the questions and generally just practice other exam questions from there. But uh, those are the ones that I'd be focusing on again and again. I don't know anything about the paper or what will come up or anything like that. It's just from looking back through the papers the different years uh, that I'm just using them to try and give you an idea of where you should be starting your studying and what you should be getting what you should be knowing, figuring out first so that's it that's all for the video